Hello, participants. Wishing you a jubilant day today. Here, this is Dr. N. Maithili, Department of English, Sri Vasavi College, the convener of the workshop, to welcome you all to the second day of the International Web Workshop on Translation and Research, a Contemporary Perspective. On behalf of our principal, the management members of Vidya Sangam, director, teaching and non-teaching members of Srivasvi College, I feel happy in welcoming you all to this wonderful session. I just want to make one thing noted here, receiving your feedback forms yesterday made me feel good about the session that's going on. Thank you all for your encouraging words. And we are actually 60% of us are here faculty members, 30% research scholars, and 10% PG students and others. Viewing your assignment forms made me feel that we have again tried to traveling into our student life. Yes, my dear participants, there were many calls and messages inquiring about Google translators and other options that are available for translations. I feel very energetic and enthusiastic traveling with you, my friends, on this platform. I hope the same other side also. Is it that you feel the same? If yes, could you please drop a word S through the chat box? Yes. I can see S just popping up in the chat box, which makes me feel again enthusiastic to be here with you today. So here in this platform, we have gathered not to prove ourselves to others, but to enhance our own knowledge, to keep alive the shelf life of our knowledge and be a better person today than what we were yesterday. That is the main motto of us being here on the fact that we are being in a very critical situation facing the feedbacks of COVID-19 in the world. Okay, so we are getting into the second day of our workshop with a welcome note to our guest today, she is Dr. R. Dharni from Government Arts College, Avinashi, Tirpur District, Tamil Nadu. I feel happy in welcoming her to this session. Let me present a short note about her to you. Every language is a world and without translation, we would have inhabit parishes bordering in silence, said George Strainer. Thus, the importance of translation is immeasurable. Without translation, literature, people would, be, would not be able to read the majority of literary works that are there in the archives and libraries to enrich their knowledge. And also, I can tell you that translation allows us to travel back in time, like a time machine, my dear participants, and get relieved from our daily routine for a while. So, to tell about our resource person today, she has 22 years of teaching experience. Since 2011, she has been guiding as a research guide. She has guided six doctoral and seven MPhil candidates. She has also presented around 27 papers in international, national, and regional levels and has 12 journal publications to her credit. In addition to that, she has also delivered 40 talks as resource persons in various colleges and universities. She keeps on traveling all around the world. Her translation book entitled Edited by a cancer survivor entitled Role of Women in Curative Care into Tamil, Poems of the Canadian Writer V. N. Giridharan into English and published a travelogue in Tamil stamps. With this, her versatility 
just moves not only in English but also in Tamil. Apart from being a translator, she is also a soft skill trainer who has trained school teachers and students of Jaffna and in Sri Lanka. She is also invited as the consultant general of India in Jaffna in the year 2018. My dear participants, here is Dr. R. Dharani, Professor and Head, Department of English, Government Arts College, Abhinashi, Tirpur District, Tamil Nadu, to enlighten us through her keynote address today. Her address is on the topic translation and research, the connecting dot. So I welcome the keynote speaker today and I wish everyone a good learning through today's session. Thank you all. Meet you again. Dear participants, just mute your video and audio. Some of you or have switched on your audio. Kindly switch it off. The resource person is approaching to us. Thank you, Dr. Maithali. Hi, everyone. Nice to meet you all here. Uh, this is, uh, of course, a very tough time. Hope you are all safe at home. Uh, though it is a tough time, we can make use of this time for our academic enrichment. Um, at this juncture, I would like to thank Dr. Maithali for having given me an opportunity to share my views here. Hope you are able to see me and uh, my voice is audible to you all. Right? Okay. Um, as Madam introduced, I'm Dr. R. Dharani, Head of the Department and Assistant Professor of English, Government Arts and Science College, Avinashi, Tirupur District, Tamil Nadu. Um, before I joined Government College, I was working with PhD College of Arts and Science for more than 10 years. When I was working there, I had the privilege of handling the paper entitled Advanced Aspects of Translation Studies for more than eight years, along with my research guide, Dr. Jainda Sri Balakrishnan. The paper is full of translation studies. It was in 2002 it started. So there it was actually a kind of like a, uh, six classes a week and uh, we had to divide the classes into two, two sections one is the first three uh, section first three classes are meant for theory this discussion on theories principles everything about translation then we had to do practical workshops in the classrooms so uh, we used to teach some the basics of translation what is translation everything about translation uh, the problems of translation everything then we had to give them some practical training like we started with words and uh, we had to uh, move towards uh, the sentences everything and we wanted our students to jot down the problems they had faced while translating this kind of, uh, of um, workshop uh, in the workshop classes what they translate they have to write the problems not what they translated Okay, from then onwards, I had a kind of like, uh, I developed a kind of patient towards uh, translation. So I started uh, translating uh, on my own, just for a time pause, uh, a piece of uh, 
poetry or prose piece, whatever I come across, some quotations and all. And uh, after I joined government service, this particular experience as a translator, I mean, a teacher of translation studies, it helped me a lot because you all know that the uh, government of uh, uh, government colleges in Tamil Nadu, they have uh, so many like uh, people, students from regional medium of education. So they find it very difficult to un understand literature and English language. So I had to translate most of the complex ideas into uh, Tamil to some extent. That's our regional medium of education here. And sometimes we had to, uh, I had to simplify the complex sentences into simple sentences so as to make the students understand my point of view. So translation is totally like, um, you can't say we are away from translation. In our day-to-day -day life, translation plays a vital role. So as a translator myself uh, uh, and uh, as a research guy, and as a teacher of English literature, I have got some ideas to share here. It's not like uh, I'm an expert in this field, but I have something to say uh, about this translation activities uh, as far as uh, the teachers are concerned, the research scholars are concerned, the students are concerned. So that's what uh, I'm here. And uh, I understand there is a gathering of uh, 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 heterogeneous gathering with the students, staff members, uh, faculty members across the country. I'm really happy to see that. And um, whatever I share are, are my views. And if you have any difference of opinion, we can very well discuss and sort it out. And uh, uh, with these few points, I would like to go to my presentation. Dr. Maiden, is it uh, clear? My audio is clear? Everything is clear? Yes, ma'am. Uh, you're clearly audible, ma'am. You okay, just start you. your presentation. Okay. 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 Ramola Chin, ma'am, please mute your audio. Okay. Participant Ramola Chin, ma'am, please mute your audio. Could I mute She's audio? the speaker. I'm the speaker. <laughs> Ramola Chin is my uh, ID. Yes, okay. ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So uh, this is my presentation. My topic is given translation and research connecting the dots. This is my topic. So when we speak about translation, we always think that it is from one language to another. Very commonly, we use translation in that way. But as far as translation is concerned, if you take that uh, particular term trans, the prefix, okay, trans, it means from one to another. So translation actually means from one medium to another. So it is from your thought process to uh, spoken. Like if, I, if I'm speaking now, I have something in my mind. So it is an abstract medium. So from abstract medium to a concrete medium. So translation is from one medium to another. And uh, um, translation has got a long, it's not like uh, it's a recently developed a field or something like that. So it has got a long history. When man was born, translation was born. Even before literature was born, translation was born because he was thinking and was trying to or express his ideas through some medium. It was earlier in the form of songs, oral narratives. Then later uh, you have the literature, maybe spoken or uh, oral or written literature. So translation has got that uh, idea behind it. And when it comes to research, so research is very important to us, to all of us. The staff members, the students, everyone has to do research if you are uh, there in the field of uh, teaching or uh, in any way. Research is very important. So my idea is here to connect the dots. How can we uh, do effectively um, make use of translation for our research purposes? So connecting the dots. For this term, I actually I thank uh, Steve Jobs. You all must have uh, known about him, the co-founder of Apple Computers. So what he says, he actually said this in one of his uh, speeches. So what he said is you connect the dots looking forward, don't connect. You, you have to connect the dots looking backwards. It's like your uh, rangoli. Usually women, we have this dotted uh, 
a rangoli in the front, in the front yard. We always do it. So when we have uh, that, we usually have dots. So many dots are there. When you have, uh, when you see dots, you don't have any idea. But when you connect the dots, it becomes a design. The same way you connect. But here he added one more point: don't go connecting frontwards. You go connecting backwards. So when you keep connecting backwards, then you will be able to see your future. So this is what, like, you have to. What I mean here is what I understood from this theory is that, uh, like, what T. S. Eliot says, tradition and individual talent. So you have a tradition behind you. Every one of us we have a tradition, okay? And somebody has uh, uh, created and uh, we live in that. So you have a tradition with you. At the same time, you have a talent on your own. So you can connect that and you can go forward. That will take you forward. So this is what I have uh, understood from this theory. And I am using this in the sense that we can also connect as the students, staff members of English literature, we can also connect. So when coming to the concept of translation, there are multiple layers of uh, meanings. And here I would like to say one thing very clearly that I'm not going to go deep into the technical aspects of translation because many speakers uh, keep speaking on that. So the theories, principles, and uh, what, uh, how a translator should be, how faithful a translation should be, all those things uh, uh, it's available everywhere. Now my thing is how we can apply it to our research. Okay, so here you have two things. I have taken two things, two levels of meanings. One is the product. The first one you can see here, the product. That's a text. So when you translate something, that is, if you take a English uh, novel or whatever it is, a text is there, and when you are translating, you are able to get another text, right? So you have the product. This is the original and you have the product. So we have this text, it's a product. The next is the act of translating. While you are doing this translation, what are you doing in between? What is the process? So both together, we call it translation as far as I'm concerned. So we are going to have a discussion on both the things. And I'm going to focus more on the first part of the text, translated text and then the process of uh, the process that is act of translating only a bit i'm going to discuss um okay so when you talk about the uh, history of translation as i told you already this is not a recent thing it is actually it has got a long history uh, along with uh, man's existence okay, since the ancient times so you have spoken and written translations. As I told you already, when somebody is speaking, the thought process, it becomes the spoken process. So that is again like a translation. And uh, somebody, uh, when somebody is saying you're trying to understand what he or she says, you're trying to understand, that is again a kind of translation. They're like It helps very much in communication. So spoken and written translations. and. Uh, as the staff members or the students of literature, we can see so many important texts that uh, enriches our uh, uh, knowledge and they're all because of translation that you can't deny. And uh, originally translation started for religious purposes. We all have studied in our social history of England, how Renaissance and Reformation it changed the entire scenario. And when it comes to Reformation, Bible translation, we cannot uh, uh, learn Reformation without uh, knowing something about Bible translation. Okay, so Bible is the most translated book in English literature, I must say. We take it to be a part of literature, though it is a holy book, we use it very regularly. So this is a, a very important uh, book for us. And uh, it came into this academic field curriculum only within this 50 or 60 years or so. It gave important, it was gaining importance only in these 50 years, but it has got a long history. And you can even see in the Indian context our Manushmriti, so the laws uh, uh, created by our ancestors that was originally in Sanskrit and they had been given to us only through translation. And when it comes to translation studies, it's a, it's a subject. 
So you study about what translation is how, and how to do translation, how to go about everything. So that becomes a subject. So you can even have in your curriculum in the higher education. So you have so many theories and one theory I've given, linguistic theory of translations. It is related to language. I mean, it is related to uh, the language of uh, uh, translation. And for us, as far as we are concerned, this is actually related to English language and your mother tongue, of course. Okay. Now, what is uh, the role of translation in India? So in India, uh, you can see the languages we speak. So I'm actually, I belong to Tamil Nadu. My, my mother tongue is Tamil, but I speak in English. So if I want to connect uh, with you all, so that should be a common medium because we don't speak the same language. You speak different languages. If you are in Tamil Nadu, of course, you speak Tamil. But if you belong to different states, you speak different languages. So how can I... Uh, share my views to you if I don't know your language. So translation is an important uh, um, medium in a country like India. It's a multilingual country. So you need language. So even to maintain our unity in diversity concept, we need to have translation. And it plays a significant role in education also. So we are using in um, our teaching also. And uh, you all must have uh, come across the text, multicultural text in the field of education too. So very common, like even in our Bharati University, we have a lot of text. We, are, we have been given uh, the translation uh, text, like translated text like uh, Odyssey, Homer's Odyssey, and even uh, Siddha's, um, this, uh, what is that, uh, Kalidas, works of Kalidas, and even Ramayana, Mahabharata, Tirupural, whatever is available in our um, uh, uh, country, then our uh, state, they are translated into English and they are actually uh, given in our um, syllabus also. Okay, so this is the role of translation in a country like India. Okay, so when it comes to the role of translation, you have to think about these two uh, organizations. Uh, this I wanted to tell you because some of you might be interested in uh, uh, proceeding with translator translation work and you have a lot of scope opportunities in india because as i told you already we need more more of translation to share our views to share our culture philosophy everything so you have one particular uh, uh, organization called ntm it's in mysuru and it's national translation mission and it organizes very frequently seminars uh, conferences, workshops, and uh, it is helping the people to, who are who wish to translate uh, to the, the showing the way to translate. So uh, it, it actually brings so many scholars from various fields of translation, and it is organizing many seminars, uh, workshops, and even uh, it's giving training, and uh, mainly for freshers. And you can apply for that, and you can get into that, and you can uh, be in contact with that. And I have given the um, my, in the website address here. So this is a very important thing for those who wish to take up translation as their uh, path. Okay, and another thing, of course, you must have heard of the Sahitya Academy. It's in Delhi. So this is the National Academy of Letters of India. So this is again conducting workshops, conferences, everything. And apart from this, uh, two more points I would I would like to specify about this. That the library of Sahiti Academy is the richest library with uh, the multilingual text available, uh, the richest collection of books, and uh, you have books on literature. And as the staff members and students of literature, at least once in our life, we have to visit the library and see what are the texts available. Maybe if you translate the text, uh, your text will be also added into that uh, uh, catalog. Okay, and it publishes a journal. And the title of the journal is Indian Literature. And apart from this, it's giving uh, awards to, every year it's giving awards to the best books in the regional writings, okay, in Tamil or Malayalam or in Kannada or Hindi. So every year it's giving uh, the, the uh, award to best books. And apart from this, it's giving uh, an award to the best translated book. So which is the translation uh, among the Indian languages. Um, I don't think it's for uh, English, only among Indian languages. For example, if a person from uh, Kerala is able to translate a Malayalam book into Tamil or into Bengali or into Hindi, that's well and good. So if it is good, 
uh, it will be like uh, uh, adjudicated and uh, the award will be given so uh, if you really want to translate if uh, most of us are bilinguals right especially the teachers of english language we have our own mother tongue nobody's mother tongue is english here right so it's a foreign language so we know english and our mother tongue is there so if uh, you can uh, if you know one more language if you are a multilingual then no problem you can even take up this project and you can submit it to the jury then you will be even sometimes you will be given the award or it's going to be a good experience so that is also there so these two organizations are promoting translation in india and coming to the uh, i'm not going to deep into this uh, history of translation because it's available everywhere uh, if you just take uh, the uh, history of translation in ancient india so i'm talking about the pre colonial period so only after english people came to india we have got english before that we didn't have a common language but sanskrit was considered to be the language of the upper class people they were actually using uh, sanskrit and they wrote everything whatever we say is a great thing all these great things like uh, mahabharata ramayana and even before that the vedas upanishads everything were in sanskrit and it was meant for the language was meant for the upper class people only upper class class people could have access to this so these people you know the people below their level could not have any access to this so this was actually a kind of like a shocking thing and uh, and uh, when buddha came when, when buddha's preaching came he wanted to reach everyone so not only for the upper class for everyone he was uh, he meant himself to be uh, for everyone so his uh, preaching it was in pali and prakriti they were actually uh, actually from sanskrit to pali and prakriti pali and prakriti they were considered to be a bit lower compared to sanskrit so they were actually translated into uh, these languages so as to reach the common people and uh, later on uh, you find mahabharata ramayana and ramayana is originally valmiki ramayana and in tamil nadu we have kamba ramayana and comparatively we we find if you know sanskrit and if you can compare valmiki ramayana with kamba ramayana and tamil teachers would agree with me that kamba ramayana is the best because it excels even the original so sometimes it happens okay the um, child is going to be a, a prodigal child and he even he or she overtakes the uh, parents okay so same thing ha happens so this is a kind of like a history of translation during pre colonial period and the translation during colonial times so many things happen but i am going to just point out only one thing that is uh, here something opposite had happened okay so something uh, on the contrary happened uh, that is like uh, uh, during the time of uh, uh, colonial period englishman uh, englishman wanted to take whatever is available in india to his country so what were good things available and uh, we have to uh, agree that we had good things i don't know now uh, we have or not but earlier during the ancestral times we had lots and lots of great literature in our uh, uh, country so it, uh, the englishman wanted to take something from here to uh, his language so this is actually tirukkural it was written around the third or fifth century and it was uh, translated to own to english by one of the englishman that is uh, his uh, irish priest so he translated many had translated but this translation pope's translation is uh, actually the best so geo pope's translation is the best translation of tirukkural tirukkural actually you must have known some of you must have known so this is actually for uh, the people of uh, north india i would like to say uh, one or two points tirukkural actually uh, consists of 1330 couplets and it uh, touches upon almost all the topics of the world like bacon's essays he just talks about everything of parents of children of adversity in the same way you find that tirukkural is actually consists of uh, every topic so this is still uh, good uh, taken to be a very good book and i think it's translated into 20 uh, languages across india and outside india too okay 
then translation in the current scenario yesterday you must have uh, listened to the speech of uh, sir so it's like google translate many of us today we need translation because we travel a lot we go to different countries and we have to uh, at least uh, make use of uh, the language the the basic greetings and basic uh, dialogues we need so uh, colonizers uh, uh, gave us english and now we have got the machine translation this is machine translation so yesterday i saw the assignment it's like uh, when you translate uh, it in google translate uh, it's not perfect what is missing is the emotion is missing so when you just uh, translate uh, on your own okay, uh, uh, it is different but when you translate in the google translate it it just uh, satisfies only the surface level uh, motive that is you want to communicate you want to know the way to railway station you want to know the uh, way to get into a hotel a restaurant that uh, that is there in google translate but i don't think um, literature is uh, emotional literature can be translated but it is helping us a lot and even you can just use your mobile phone and you can speak it, it is being translated okay so this is the current scenario now the need for translation why do we need trans, uh, translation so you just uh, imagine we are teaching so many texts in our classrooms right and most of the texts are literary works starting from aristotle's poetics so when we start teaching criticism without poetics we cannot uh, go further that's a basic point everyone who comes later dryden or uh, um, uh, johnson everyone is referring to aristotle but aristotle's poetics what was not written in english it was in greek so it was translated into uh, english for uh, uh, benefit so you find this terms like mimesis catharsis everything is new to us we sometimes uh, make spelling errors like catharsis what is the first letter k or c this because of this translation and you have the uh, homer's iliad and odyssey and from that you have the different versions ulysses and meitu kalidas uh, the works of kalidas and of course you have mahabharatam ramayanam and how can we leave uh, these two people leo tolstoy and anton chekhov they never wrote in english they wrote in their language russian literature so uh, without the translation it is not possible to know these people just imagine even tabo not country uh, had he, had he not translated his own work works into english we would not have known him so originally he wrote in bengali then later he translated everything into english i, I, I think some of the works he translated especially geetanjali he translated and uh, <coughs> other uh, works uh, have been translated by some other uh, bengali writers so uh in our higher education translated texts they are very important and we are using them using them without even knowing the fact that they have been translated we think that they are all uh, the original english writing it's not so okay so some more texts i would like to point out you will be like um, you will uh, be surprised to see so of course you know uh, the most uh, translated work in history is the bible and you can find the number of times uh, it has been translated originally it was written in uh, hebrew and then it was translated into many languages and uh, when you study uh, translation studies as a uh, subject or as a discipline in your college you cannot just uh, leave away this topic bible translation because bible translation has got a long history and you find that many uh, uh, translators who are trying to translate bible were burnt at stake because they had to change one or two words one or two like uh, idioms or whatever it is when they changed for the purpose of uh, uh, translating uh, the people were very furious about this translation that he, these people had changed the word of god so that was a very like uh, what to say like uh, sensitive area and it was very tough in spite of that you have lots of bible and if we remember the authorized version of the bible during the time of king james 1611 but it is not available now it is very rarely it's kept in a museum you have lots of uh, lots of versions of bible and coming to the other uh, major uh, religion uh, islam so quran it was uh, translated into 114 languages but uh, it was not uh, 
translated nobody came forward to translate because they also believe that uh, uh, translating god's word is not possible so they never allow translation so that's why only in uh, compared to bible it's very like uh, the number of translations are very less okay and some of the classics i have given the uh, the languages the diary of a young girl by anne frank it's in dutch and this actually this is a kind of like a, a what to say it's a, it's a holocaust uh, period you can take it to be a memoir it's a holocaust period it represents holocaust period the nazis everything so you can find the the oppression the sufferings uh, of the jews in the diary of a young girl so it's in dutch and now you have english translations you have movies also and around the world in 80 days is again from french and less miserable again victor hugo's that's during the time of french revolution and aesop's fables greek and odyssey Iliad's uh, uh, Iliad and Odyssey, and Divine Comedy by Dante is an Italian work, and you have Tol Tolstoy's work. You have every work of Tolstoy. They have been translated into English, and you have One Hundred Years of Solitude. It's from Spanish, and uh, to our surprise, A Doll's House. It's like I can find uh, this particular text everywhere, almost in all the universities, because it represents a modern drama and uh, feminism, everything. But it is not originally written in English. It was written in Danish because he's a Norwegian. Henry Kitson was a Norwegian. So we never knew. Like uh, sometimes, you no, know, we think that everything is in English. We always give importance to English that we forget uh, or we don't. Um, Think about the regional writings or any other writings. So you have these things in front of you. And uh, even if you if you think I don't need translation at all, why should I learn about translation? I have some other work to do, and I don't need translation in my life at all. If you think so, if you are choosing an African American writer for your research, or if you are teaching African American writer in the classroom. you will come across this problem what is the problem this can you see the left hand side this this is actually taken from a text okay and it is a text uh, written by american writer mark twain that's huckleberry finn so you can find this is english this is not greek or latin so you find this uh, the whole paragraph is written with a a v e african american vernacular english this is actually very tough because you cannot ask you can't ask a student to stand up and read if you have this uh, this text you cannot uh, make uh, the student to read because he will be like uh, uh, stumbling or so here you can find it's, it's a kind of uh, difficult thing it's english but it is uh, it's a kind of uh, dialectal english so you have to neutralize it to the normal english it is not a mean it's the same so this is african or american vernacular english now i have neutralized it's available you can neutralize if you read twice you can understand because you can find for coming g is missing round so you can see apostrophe unnecessarily apostrophe this is known as african american vernacular english so this is a very interesting if you are teacher of english if you are a student of english you can very well do a research on this how what are the uh, the different markers you find in the Uh, usage of African Americans when they come to use because that's not their mother tongue. English is not the mother tongue of African Americans. So this is actually a kind of African American vernacular English. Very uh, you, very commonly you will find in the writings of Alice Walker, um, uh, though they are not using it personally. The characters of uh, the novels will use it in the novels of Toni Morrison. All the African American writers. mostly you can come across but this is actually taken from not an african american writer this is taken from mark twain it's an american writer of the 1800s and it's uh, huckleberry finn is one of the greatest uh, classics of american literature so why i'm telling this is uh, this kind of thing is again it comes under translation now we move on to the important point research what is re research so our research in literature is different from other subjects we are not like uh, commerce or uh, statistics or any other subject our uh, research is totally different and very challenging 
that's why we are, we are not able to produce so, so many uh, research, uh, uh, I mean, PhD candidates uh, like other subjects. It's very tough. It takes a lot of time. It, it, it involves a lot of work. And uh, uh, what to say, commitment is more important. And uh, for us, uh, we uh, totally depend upon a text. Whereas the other uh, subjects, they go out, they go for sampling techniques, they go for data collection, so many other things. Whereas when it comes to English literature, unless you are doing on doing an ELT or linguistics, otherwise you have to depend solely on the uh, textbooks, textbook of a creative writer. So you have to choose an author and you have to do research on it. And uh, what is the purpose of doing research? We have to develop our career. So we have to do research, otherwise we won't do. It's like when you, if you want to get into a regular course, you should have completed Netraslet and PhD is very really important, especially for teaching PG classes, you need to have PhD. The PhD is for our career development and it's like, uh, if you take it in this way, it is for our uh, uh, like uh, uh, research. So you are creating new ideas and you become like uh, very confident about your work because you have done something great. So it's like inferring new scopes and you are able to guide other scholars in the future. So this is a very important uh, uh, thing that we have to follow. And original contribution is a must. Okay? It is not that uh, many are like cut, copy, paste. We always see uh, it's very simple for them taking some points here and there and you just uh, mix it together and you present it and you are always very happy that you have uh, completed your work. It is not so. It should be like uh, to some extent original. Of course, we depend upon secondary sources, but still it should be original and avoiding plagiarism. So you have to avoid plagiarism. If we are always we say, no, we, we have quotation. What does a quotation mean? A quotation means that this is not my original. Quotation means whatever is inside the double quotes, it means that I've taken it from somebody. Somebody else has said, and I'm using it. This quotation we know, but we are not using it in our research. We take somebody's ideas and we use it as if, as if it is our own. So this actually leads to plagiarism. And nowadays you find that in many universities and the colleges, it's made mandatory that you have to check the thesis for plagiarism. So that is a headache. And uh, I suggest you, the research scholars, uh, to take up this uh, websites. They are helping you a lot. So it's not a like a, a great, great thing, a Herculean task. You can just uh, use this kind of websites. So, okay, you can just type if you are taking something from website, you take that website address and just uh, put it here in this uh, Purdue own. Uh, it's a foreign university is offering this uh, citation generator. So you can make use of this and you can come up with the citation. If it is a web page, it will give you a kind of thing. And it's a book or journal. Depending upon that, it will ask for the name of the author or who published it, the year of publication, that you have to make a note of it. And when you just feed it, you will get a thing. So this uh, uh, ID is, I mean, link is given here. So you can make use of uh, this uh, for your research. It will help you to avoid plagiarism. That's a different, entirely different topic, but I would like to point out here. Okay, so what is research? It's a, it should be creative. It should be like a, 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 you have to think differently. It should not be the, the same thing that I've already done many times. So creative, innovative, interpretative. You have to interpret. So you have to have your own idea. What is there in the text you may not give? What is there in the bazaar guide you do not give? What is your interpretation of a particular novel or the author that you can give? And it should be objective. Uh, actually, I get some thesis for evaluation from other universities and other states also. I find that many are very easily using the personal pronouns. Like I think, uh, we think, we assume. We come to a conclusion. I, we should not be used in thesis because it should be entirely objective. Nobody wants your opinion. Your interpretation is needed. Your personal opinion should not be given in the research. So it should be objective, third person point of view. So that's why uh, we always say you can go for even uh, choosing controversial topics. Uh, it doesn't matter. 
some people think oh no i don't want to do on african literature i don't want to do on this particular uh, muslim taslim and shin i don't want to do because i may get into controversy how will you get into controversy you are taking the points from the novel and you are analyzing it you are giving a third person point of view you are not giving your own opinion so it is like an objective thing and you are submitting the thing submitting the research that will be helpful to many so it won't be a controversial thing even uh, the novelist actually are giving the ideas of the characters even not even the novelist the novelist uh, himself or herself will deny i have never said this is actually a fiction something imagination that's why when there was a controversy over uh, dan brown's uh, da vinci co um he dan brown very cleverly said it was it, everything happened in a dream i was dreaming that everything happened that i was going uh, in, in, uh, in pursuit of that uh, uh, golden cup and uh, um, jesus christ everything so everything was a uh, kind of dream so it is not even the novelist idea it's from the imagination so you can very well choose any such topics but be objective and you should have thorough knowledge if you are choosing somebody's book you should be thorough it is not that uh, i have seen many students many scholars three years why it's given three years for research research should be done very like uh, in a uh, method methodical way very casually you have to read a lot you have to enrich your knowledge then towards the end of the third year you have to submit your thesis that is with the help of your the knowledge you have gained you can submit but many people think that for two years they don't do anything they are simply saying oh, which or the pictures what to choose no idea nothing and no 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 don't want to work no visiting libraries then the third year they sit and they complete the work so that will be i, I think i am very sorry to say half baked work so better you start uh, doing the work from day one if you have registered yourself for phd if you are doing um, uh, research you start from the beginning you start reading a lot nothing is going to be a waste so you start reading thorough knowledge is very important if you have thorough knowledge then automatically you will be like empowered so uh, text based as i told you already we depend solely on primary sources that's a novelist if you are choosing a particular novelist tony morrison okay if you are choosing tony morrison the novels you are choosing okay what are the novels you are choosing that's a primary sources then you depend upon secondary sources too then research methodology of course you have to be very careful with the research methodology actually even punctuation marks play a vital role so you cannot leave away a punctuation mark and you can say it's nothing or it's not going to be a big thing because just a comma or a uh, full stop it will surely affect and so you have to be thorough with research methodology those who are uh, taking up research they have to write a paper on research methodology but many uh, scholars even after writing an exam and uh, getting through the paper they don't understand research methodology if you think you are not a very uh, very good in doing this kind of uh, methodology no problem you can go to that owl purview owl like websites you can check how to uh, do citations how to acknowledge the quotations how to give work cited list list that's very important that what you write inside the thesis and uh, other thing is you have to apply a critical theory critical theory is very important so critical theories are like uh, the measurement if i want to measure a sack of rice what will i do i cannot simply say the sack of rice consists of uh, 100 kg i should have some measurement okay so i should have some kind of like uh, kg is this many kg is how i measure if i am measuring oil i will have i take liters how many liters of oil i have in this can the same thing is applicable to our research you have some text and you want to assess it you need some measurement and that measurement or uh, is the critical theories you can choose any critical theory which is applicable to the text you have chosen and process to product so you are doing all this process and you finally you get your uh, thesis that is a product and for us for the teachers of english language and the research scholars language is the raw material you have to enhance your language you cannot simply use the language that you find in any bazaar guides okay tony morrison is a writer she belongs to uh, this country this kind of writing is uh, of course it has meaning but 
when it comes to thesis, you can enrich your language. How can we enrich your language? Start reading the best novels in English. Before you get into your thesis, you start reading the best novels like Charles Dickens' novels, the novels of Jane Austen, Pride and Prejudice, it's full of uh, complex sentences. You don't, won't even understand which is the subject, which is a verb, because a sentence starts from the first line to the fifth, it ends in the fifth line. So that's a sentence, a long sentence. Of course, we can't, we can't write such a long sentence, but to some extent, we will understand how to write a complex sentence in our thesis. That will enrich your thesis. So all the other things I have already said, hypothesis, you have to form, formulate a hypothesis. If I'm taking Tony Morrison's novels, what kind of uh, idea I have, what kind of point I have, so that is hypothesis, choice of the text. Okay, so what kind of text I have to choose, but uh, with, along with your research guide, you can select. And primary and secondary sources, collection of data, you have to visit as many libraries as possible, and of course, your websites are that, but still, visiting libraries will give you more uh, knowledge. And uh, limitations, you have to specify the limitations of your study. Limitations means if you are taking Tony Morrison's novels, if you are uh, applying feminism, you stick on to feminism alone. We are not talking about a thematic comparison, or you are not going to talk about something else in the novel. You can give a passing reference, but your limitation is you are only within this area of feminism. Okay, there might be some other ideas in the novel, but what is your area? You have to stick on to that. And you have to, first of all, make blueprint of the chapters. Just like how we build a home, we have to draw a blueprint for the home no? before we construct. The same way, we have to make blueprint of the chapters, and you have to come with the summation, appropriate summation with proper scope for the further study. And I already told you, avoiding plagiarism. And within the tenure of three years, you have to publish minimum two in a journal. That is very important. That is, again, it should be related to the uh, topic of your research. That would be good. So this is the entire idea about research. Why I'm giving this is, uh, we have lot, lots of challenges. We think that many people used to say, literature people, you can sit at home and you can complete your thesis. It is not so. It's very tough for us. We have to be like different. We have to be creative. We have to avoid plagiarism. We have to have a language. We have to refer to the libraries. All those challenges in front of us. Now, I am giving you a few suggestions. It's not like mandatory suggestions. You can just see. You can make use of translation and translated texts in the research. So translation, when you take the process of translation, you can go for, that is more applicable to the people who have chosen linguistics. So you can compare two languages while you take uh, two, when you're translating, what kind of language changes, syntactic uh, changes, lexics, uh, yesterday Sarva started talking about the lexicon, the changes in the lexicon, everything. So that, those kind of things can be, compared, language can be compared, and um, you can find out the general and specific differences in them. And uh, media studies. Many people, they don't, uh, nowadays you find out that I think in northern, North India, they are doing very well. Media studies, film theory. So many, most of the novels are made into films. So how? So one medium to another. I already told you. Second translation from the written print medium to visual medium. So you can even take that and you can compare and you can do that. And genre studies, from one genre to another. A novel can become a play, a play can become a novel, or a novel can be written in prose, something like that. So you can compare the genres, how, what, what are the changes? There are some changes. You cannot simply say that the King Lear can be changed into a novel. Just like that, you cannot you can take everything and put it in the form of knowledge. There are some changes. So you can make an analysis or research on that also. And stylistic analysis, that is again related to linguistics. So how the style of Charles Dickens is different from the style of Jane Austen. We always say this is women's writing. Women won't use these words. Women won't use this kind of style. Only men have this. all these things we have. Even in language, we say women's language and men's language. So the, the, the difference is that. So this kind of stylistic analysis you can do. And adaptation. So you can just uh, 
take uh, adaptation how it is adapted one particular i'll give you examples don't worry i'll give you so one particular thing and how it is adapted into different ways so that kind of analysis also you can uh, do okay this is one side on one side the other side you have using the translated text if not if you are not interested in this okay you can go to this side translated text the products you have translated text in front of you so you can go for comparative literature it's a part of translation so you can compare the books which are uh, translated from other languages other countries into our language or in english and thematic comparison also you can do not only the process you can do how it is translated you can even go for you take translated text and how thematic comparison you can do and the social movements political uh, context historical periods similarities and dissimilarities everything can be done with the translated text so we will just uh, i'll give you some more suggestions just see so this actually you can find this is rk narayan swami and friends okay swami and his friends originally written in english by rk narayan and uh, in tamil there are two uh, renderings same for the same book two translations in tamil done by two different authors swamiyum snehidargalum swamiyum anandigal so you can take this and you can compare how it is being translated into tamil what is the difference the same book how it is totally different and you can even see the pictures pictures are different here arkinarayan's uh, book and here you find swamiyum snehidargalum swami is the protagonist you find here here the friends are focused here only swami is focused Here the friends are focused. So you in the title you have Swami and friends, two subjects. Here one subject is given importance. Even from the image you can identify the difference. So different rankings. And here you find influence. These are all the uh, the offshoots of translation. So here you find influence. See what I am giving here are just samples. If you can come across such books in your uh, curriculum in your in your uh, interest of your interest you can choose that you shouldn't uh, stick on to this this is just an example i'm giving so here you find uh, influence christopher marlowe's jew of malta critics say uh, that uh, shakespeare must have been influenced by christopher marlowe that's why he had taken the jew okay and he has used the word merchant okay jew is a merchant here shylock here so here again A Jew. So this both of both the texts they speak about anti-Semitism. They are hated towards Jews. So this kind of influence you can find in literature. That kind of study also research scholars can do. Then next point is print to visual medium. So it's a kind of comparison. Print medium is novels. So you find Tony Morrison's Gulliver, right? and it's available in movie form also. so you can take tony morrison and you can just see the movie what are the changes or how the screen play was written you don't think it doesn't belong to literature it belongs to literature you can do a research very well we can do a research tony morrison's print medium can be compared with the visual medium so print a visual what happens what are the changes why those changes why it is included why it is excluded why deletion omission all those things you can do that becomes a thesis that becomes a research you can even see the same with harry potter so the different uh, stories and different uh, movies all in the stories even narnia for that say uh, uh, what is that um, uh, narnia uh, prince caspian we have seen the movie all those things you can take and you can analyze so you can read the text and you can make a comparison of the print the visual medium and when it comes to adaptation adaptation is actually you have complete freedom but the original you are not deviating from the original story the story is the same the characters might be the same but you have freedom to add more incidents more uh, ideas to more characters or you delete one character that kind of freedom is with adaptation but when you read that you will understand it is the story okay that you can find in um, the use of uh, uh, antony and cleopatra so that was actually taken from plutarch's lives of the noble grecians and romans that is again uh, was a translation 
uh, into English by Sir no no Thomas North in 1579. So that was used by Shakespeare as Antony and Cleopatra, focusing more on the love between Antony and Cleopatra. And after that, in the neoclassical period, Alpha Love by John Dryden. Then later in the modern uh, 20th century, Bernard Shaw's uh, play Caesar and Cleopatra. So what is common in all the three is Cleopatra. You find Caesar and Cleopatra here, but the Cleo the character of Cleopatra is handled differently by different writers. This is adaptation. So you understand that Antony is there, Cleopatra is there, Caesar is there, Octavia is there, Octavia Caesar is there. All those people are still there because it's taken from Plutarch's lives. But there might be some addition, some some characters are added or some characters are deleted. And uh, here you, are, you must have studied, you must have read Alpha Law. It's, it's stuck onto the classical unity, unity of time, phase, and action, whereas Shakespeare is not uh, uh, following that. And in, when it comes to Bernard Shah, it's totally different. So it's a, uh, the uh, character, the Cleopatra is totally different uh, portrayed differently by Bernard Charles. She's a modern Cleopatra. So this kind of uh, work, this is an, it's a sample. If you can see this kind of things in your mother tongue or uh, translated into English, we can very well choose that. Okay. Next. So transcreation, it's uh, known as uh, rewritten, refashioned. This is again an interesting idea. This is again a part of translation. Here, King Lear, we all know, it was written during uh, 1603 to 1606. So, so there's a play. In the previous case, uh, All for Love, uh, then Shakespeare, Santin, Cleopatra, Caesar, Cleopatra, all are plays. When it comes to this King Lear, there's an interesting point. King Lear was a clear play. It was later uh, written, it's uh, rewritten. Not actually, it's not with the same name, King Lear or Cordelia or Regan. It's very written, but if you read this novel, A Thousand Acres, you will surely remember King Lear. Almost all the ideas are there. So, A Thousand Acres by James Miley, it was in 1991. Okay, and slightly some changes created. And this novel, not King Lear, this novel was made into a movie in 1997. This is really interesting. If you do such kind of research, there won't be plagiarism. It's it will be an original book. Okay, so from play to novel, novel to movie. So all are interrelated. Uh, but everything has got a connection. Okay, so this is one thing. Some more examples uh, of uh, literary adaptations. Jane Eyre, it's by Charlotte Bronte, and uh, she wrote under the pen name Carol Bell. So it was written in 1840. Yes. Ma'am, this is Maithili. Uh, actually, we, uh, your presentation is off, but do you want, don't want your presentation or anything? Oh, no, 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 no. I, uh, maybe by mistake. Okay. Okay, ma'am. Okay, ma'am. Can you see now? Just a minute, ma'am. Can you see? Just check. I think uh, by mistake, I have uh, clicked the button, right? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. It's not a problem. Just a minute, ma'am. Uh, we were audible with all your uh, oh, explanations, ma'am. The oh, thing okay. is, we didn't one second, I'll come again. Okay. Maybe I'll start giving. Ma'am, you can make a yeah. uh, press yeah, now. Okay, okay, okay. I'll just. Yes, ma'am. Oh, I understood. Uh, I made a mistake. Yes, ma'am. Now, can you see? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, sorry. I, I think I clicked the stop, stop sharing button. Because okay, we are to this, okay. Now, okay. adaptation, I think I told you, then this uh, transcreation or uh, um, the transcreation, King Lear, Thousand Acres, then novel into a movie. I think you have seen this, right? This slide, did you see? Okay. King Lear was made into a novel, then novel to a movie. Then next is some more samples you find. Jane Eyre. Uh, by Charlotte Bronte in 1847 and uh, from then onwards there were so many versions of uh, Jane Eyre in the form of movies. You can see starting from 1910, okay, first eight silent movies then later on different versions of same movie. 
So Jane Eyre in 1965 or uh, 2000, even today somebody can take Jane Eyre. Different renderings. So say like uh, Bible. Bible was translated by many. Different renderings of the Bible. The same way, Jane Eyre's different versions. Okay? Same story, different versions. And another important, uh, interesting thing here is you find Jane Eyre's adaptation by Sagaso C by Jean Rice, published in 1966. It was a postmodern novel. Jane Eyre was not a postmodern novel. But based on Jane Eyre, there is another novel written by French writer Jean Rice, and it was published in 1966. And it was made into a movie, an Australian film, in 1993. And another version is in 2003, you have the TV adaptation, British television adaptation, Seasons. It came as Seasons. So you find the different changes. So we have this novel, Jane Eyre. So what are the branches of it? So you can even do such things. There are lots and lots are available in the net. You can find such things or you can even see in your syllabus. There are so many comparisons. Okay. And uh, if you just think, uh, no, I don't want to apply this kind of adaptations, you can go for the normal theories you can apply on translated text. So application of other critical theories on the, the translated works. For example, the theory of space is a new theory. What is a space? You have psychological space, you have space at home, domestic space, you have uh, the space in the society, social space, cultural space. Uh, most of us have problems because we don't have enough space. Space means uh, we should uh, have our own freedom, at least to do something that we want to do. We are actually uh, guided or uh, dominated or uh, you can even say pampered by somebody, then we will lose our space that is suffocating. So space theory is, uh, is currently very like uh, dominant. It's a dominant theory. So you can apply the theory um, in the writings of the immigrants. Many people who have been forced to leave their country for some political purposes. We always speak about a uh, kind of minor space, like I don't have uh, enough space in my home. Do you remember Virginia Woolf's uh, room of one's own? We don't have, as women, we don't even have a chair and a table at home. Even if you are a working woman, very rarely you'll find. Because only men can have, I'm sorry, very many men are here, but this is the truth. We don't have our own table, we don't have our own uh, chair and uh, we have our own space to sit and do our work. We are taken as a person who are doing some domestic work and such things. Okay, let us accept. If you are accepting that, no problem. That is a different thing. But when it is when it comes to the immigrants, you must have seen immigrants. Many people are forced to leave their country. So that happened in Sri Lanka. So this I am giving you just an example. So I had made use of, uh, when I was doing uh, research and uh, I was at the initial stage of my research, I was searching for such things because I never wanted to repeat whatever is already done. Many people are doing uh, again and again on Anitra Desai, Manjul Kapoor. Of course, they are all very great writers, Star Wars, that's different. But why repeating the same? Then automatically you will have to plagiarize something. Same points that others have repeated will be there. So I wanted to do something differently, even for my paper presentation. So I came across the person V. N. Gridharan. He is very much uh, there in Canada. He is a Sri Lankan Tamil who is living there. He is running a e magazine. His uh, um, uh, email ID is given here, and he had written his experiences in the form form of short stories and novels. An immigrant. He was a Sri Lankan, and after the riots in Sri Lanka, he was forced to. Uh, take uh, asylum uh, and he, uh, he went to uh, America first without any uh, visa or something. So he had to be like an uh, illegal immigrant some, sometimes there and he had to go to uh, Canada. Finally, now he is in Canada. Now he is almost settled. He is fine. He's a good writer. He's running a magazine, the magazine, everything. But initially, uh, he suffered. So when I read that, it was totally new to me because I never suffered all those things. I'm having everything. So when I read this, no, I, I thought, okay, the, the whole world should know. There is some problem. Literature is, the beauty of literature is that you have to take the points to the world. 
So I should initially it was in uh, Tamil. He wrote everything in Tamil. Then I took the uh, Tamil thing and poems and all. I translated. It was really a good thing. I I had a kind of satisfaction. Then I presented papers on him, and I was uh, welcomed by everyone because everyone was presenting on the oft-repeated writers: Nandra Shaga, Shashi Deshpande, uh, Shobadi, Arundhati Rai. Of course, they are great. They can directly write in English. They are elite group of writers. Okay, and anybody can read, but who will read these people? So, as a person who knows Tamil and English, I thought I could do something. So, you, if you come across such writers or such uh, um, points in your uh, area in your mother tongue, you can very well come out with it. So, translations, if translations are available, you can very well focus on that. So, diaspora writing is another thing. People on movement, many people they go from one place to another. And now you can see, like uh, uh, in, during the time of Corona, you find many North Indian workers. They move. It's a kind of like uh, exodus. It's very like uh, very heartbreaking. No? So you just see how they are carrying their children, carrying all their uh, baggages, and they are walking okay? uh, so many miles, uh, so many kilometers. That's like same thing. Diaspora. Why they are going? There must be a reason. Simply they can't move. So what is the reason? So you can do that kind of what is the space that is missing for them. So you can apply space theory and you can find out by these things. So if you want to know more about that, you can just uh, mail him. Uh, and Afghan women writings also. Many of us, many many women in India, or many of us, we are not bothered about how women suffer across the world. Then how do we know? Only through translation we come upon, uh, we come to know of these people. Right, so Afghan women's writings and how they even Taslima Nishin's Najra they created a, a chaos. Okay, so we have to do, uh, we have to write about these people in our research. Nobody is going to do anything with you. Okay, don't be worried. So you can choose so, such things and you will be totally unique. Okay, next is eco criticism. You can even apply eco criticism in the translated text. And Indian texts, well, many. I have given only some because um, we have in our syllabus Chemin. The third year class, we are teaching Chemin. Chemin is a, a novel, classical novel by a writer from Kerala. Chemin, even the very term Chemin refers to a kind of, it's, I think it's prawn, uh, it's a kind of um, fish available in Kerala. And of course, we all know that Kerala is known for the seashore. Whereas when it comes to Tamil Nadu, we don't have these shows except if you have to go to Chennai or uh, Pondicherry or outside Tamil Nadu, you have these shows or uh, Nagapatanam, those areas, Tirchendu. People here in Coimbatore, we have never, many of our students, when I asked them, they said we are, they have never seen a sea at all. So we, how do we understand then sea vocabulary? Chemmi, how do we know? Chemmi by Tahali Shivashankara Pillai. Translated by Anita Nair. But what we are doing is we are doing research or presenting papers on Anita Nair's very stupid. But she had translated her literature. She belongs to Kerala, so Chemin into um, English, fisherman community. And uh, another thing I have come across is Red Tin Roof, Hindi. It was in Hindi with a different name and it was translated into English. It uh, totally talks about the beauty of Shimla. And uh, our country has a lot of uh, beautiful spots, but we don't know. At least for literature, we can enjoy. So you can take such a kind of uh, text and you can go for eco criticism, the Indian text in translation. We always we take the criticism, eco criticism, we search for some Australian writer or any other uh, uh, island writers, Caribbean writers for doing this. Why can't we do on? Indian text in English translation. Why can't we include such text in our curriculum? Okay. So this is my thing. And when I talk about uh, eco criticism, I always make a reference to Tamil literature, it's Sangam literature, Sangam around third century. Uh, there were poems, we call it Aham literature. Aham means inside your uh, life, personal life. So it's divided into five landscapes. Even land is a very great. Uh, point you can discuss in your research. 
குறிஞ்சி முல்லை மருதம் நெய்தல் பாலை குறிஞ்சி இஸ் மவுண்டனஸ் ரீஜன் முல்லை ஃபாரஸ்ட் மருதம் கிராப் லேண்ட் ஃபார்மிங் லேண்ட் த நெய்தல் இஸ் சீ ஷோ அண்ட் பாலை பாலை இஸ் பெசர் தட் வி டோன்ட் ஹாவ் தமிழ்நாடு இட் டசன்ட் ஹாவ் பாலை வி ஹாவ் ஒன்லி இன் ராஜஸ்தான் ஸோ யூ ஹாவ் ஆல் தி ஃபோர் லேண்ட்ஸ் ஹியர் அண்ட் ஃபார் ஈச் ரீஜன் த ஹோல் ஆஃப் தமிழ்நாடு யூ கேன் ஃபைண்ட் ஹியர் த ஹோல் ஆஃப் தமிழ்நாடு திஸ் ப்ளூ இஸ் சீ ஷோ தட் இஸ் நெய்தல் ஃபார் ஈச் ரீஜன் யூ ஹாவ் ஸ்பெசிஃபிக் கார்ட்ஸ் ஸ்பெசிஃபிக் ஃப்ளோரா ஸ்பெசிஃபிக் ஃபானா எவ்ரி திங் ஸ்பெசிஃபிக் தேர் ஒர்க் ஹண்டிங் இஸ் தேர் இன் மவுண்டைன் ஓகே ஃபாரஸ்ட் அண்ட் கிராப் லேண்ட் இஸ் ஃபார்மிங் யூ டூ ஃபார்மிங் யூ கேன் ஃபைண்ட் பிக்சர்ஸ் அண்ட் திஸ் இஸ் நெய்தல் பிகாஸ் இட்ஸ் ரிலேட்டட் டு சி ஸோ த ப்ரீவியஸ் ஒன் சென்னை இஸ் நெய்தல் இட் பிலாங்ஸ் டு நெய்தல் ஈவன் இன் கேரளா ஸோ இட் கம்ஸ் அந்த தர் ஸோ நாள் திஸ் ரீஜன்ஸ் போம்ஸ் ஆர் ரிட்டன் and they were published they were in tamil and they have been translated into english so if you know tamil and if you can read english then you can even present papers on it and you can make a reference if, if you come across such things in any of the english literature text english text you can very well come back that can be a great contribution to tamil literature as well as to english literature when geo pop can translate tirukural why can't we do then partition literature this is again another uh, thing i want to discuss with our students because uh, again partition literature is totally um, neglected by the people of south india whereas partition literature is very much uh, like uh, common to the north indians especially the bengalis the um, the punjabis and the people who are in kashmir they were affected by partition so partition literature is there more in the north indian side even i was not aware of this kind of literature but I, when i um, took up a refresher course in simla in himachal pradesh university many people talked about the literature and partition i was thinking what is partition i was not affected okay even in this exodus now it's happening the north indian uh, workers are moving i am not affected so i may not know that suffering of most people then how can i call myself that i know i write about the suffering of tony morrison i write about the suffering of somebody else so i should understand being a person belonging to literature i must have that kind of sensitivity so partition literature uh, to be frank i was not aware because tamil nadu i think is the safest place we were not affected by partition whereas these people who lived in uh bengal and punjab and in the those bells they suffered a lot i think uh, we have a short story by k abbas um a re- refugee i think many in the many of the part of english classes we teach while they are teaching i used to struggle a lot because they don't know what happened to that manji why she was asked to go from uh, Ra- rawalpindi to i mean from her place to rawalpindi something lahore to rawalpindi why this travel they never understand so i had to tell about the partition so we the students of tamil nadu or south india we can take up this partition literature in translation but again when we talk about partition literature we always think about pushpan singh's uh, trying to pakistan i stand in man so we go for elite writers there are some regional literature Uh, that's available in translation so you have this uh, um, the suggestions are given tamas by visham shahani it's in hindi and the epic country tend urdu translated by umar mehman partition about partition and partitions the story is uh, titled as partitions and uh, uh, you have uh, he is asking a question kitne pakistan how many pakistans okay so it's very interesting and the village divided It's again uh, translated by a person, a okay, semi-autobiographical novel. And uh, this is not that dawn by Ashford. Uh, th- this is about pre-partition Lahore. And a woman's courtyard, it is about the Kashmiri woman. How women were used for only for flesh before uh, partition. They are in Kashmir, the beautiful women, pretty women. How they were exploited. All those things were given in this uh, novel. i just i gave a kind of like a casual reading but it's available on amazon so you can just go through and you can 
get those books and you can do research on this at least some papers you can present and when it comes to feminism in translation uh, this is uh, the bible of feminism in india when we speak about feminism we always take the theories of french feminists american feminists or feminists of some other place even spy work is not uh, a person who is living in india she was a she was just an indian because of her birth but she is living somewhere so what is really happening is different she knows only at the surface level okay so women's writing in india how women came to this field of writing starting from the ancestral time so all these things are edited by sushita ro so if you can afford to buy this book for your college library well and good because uh, we should be like uh, exposed to such writings like uh, songs of buddhist nuns and you have the medieval poets of india women poets and uh, many like uh, unknown voices or uh, recorded and how and uh, i tell you from the songs you will understand a lot women are the people who women are very good in singing so they are they always sing whatever they have in their mind their happiness their agony everything is sung so those uh, songs if they are recorded then uh, you can understand what feminism is in india from the ancient times so this is a suggestion i'm giving you and feminism in india again when i talk, talk about feminism we always talk about the upper class feminism so what is upper class feminism anita desai's feminism nayendra shetty's feminism so she gets point is feminism they have some problems of course i don't say no but can we compare that feminism with the feminism of a dalit woman or any other woman no not equal okay they don't even have the basic needs of life and these women at least they have something they have the room of their own then they have some problems psychological problems okay they want a complete uh, absolute freedom that's different but these women they they are not even treated as human beings so you find a difference feminism in india we can can't compare ourselves with french feminist or with american feminist we have our own way of living ours is a, a mixed of a mixing of male and female here men are supporting women so you have bharatiya periya and ambedkar everyone is support, supporting women upliftment empowerment whereas in foreign countries women they support themselves so ours is different we can't compare indian feminism with any other feminism so if you really want to know how women are suffering how women are viewed in the society you can take such writings as the liberation of sita the telugu thing it's in available in english and i've given a small gist and you have the courtesan skipper this is again kashmir and uh, ambai tamil writer ambai in a forest a day she always uh, talks about uh, how women have one specific place at home that is kitchen she is very happy we always uh, glorify her uh, amma mom is very happy in kitchen she is not happy it's very sweating you want to come out of it you want to run out of it but you glorify mother food kitchen so she says no you have given me that place only so i have to be there one day so you are giving me my place how can i just argue for a better place so you can find that kind of feminism this is a common feminism but as i told you already dalit feminism is there and you have uh, dalit women writers bama she is a woman writer in tamil nadu she wrote a novel called karuk three novels she has written you can do on it my research was on the comparison of Toni Morrison and Bama. So I compared Toni Morrison, the Nobel laureate, with Bama, which was uh, very like uh, appreciated by a foreign evaluator. Toni Morrison side, I was not clear because uh, I couldn't refer to many of the latest journals. But when it comes to Bama, I was very clear because I can read both Tamil and English. So she was the foreign examiner. She is a uh, black American. She was appreciating. she was finding fault with tony morrison's references but when it comes to bama she says oh very good i would like to read about bama so what kind of uh, society you have you are oppressed by women themselves in the name of uh, sister in law mother in law who oh, is interesting she has written this so this will make you 
unique okay you take somebody from your mother tongue uh, regional text compare it with somebody in foreign text uh, some flow from foreign text then it will become a different one and uh, you have another dalit writer she is an ias uh, uh, officer p sivagami taming of uh, women as far as i know only some women are writing dalit women are writing and uh, very prominent are these and uh, in other states i don't know but i have uh, culled out some um, from the internet so less known writers so bama's karuk then this is a genre of caste is a kind of bible for uh, dalit feminism this is a reference book and uh, you can find chandrika she's a dalit woman in malayalam and very sadly her books uh, had not been translated into english but she is a very good writer dalit writer in malayalam so no translation is available nobody knows her so any malayalis can take up that work and it will be a great service so chandrika devi she is a dalit woman if it is not in english we won't be knowing because we can't read malayalam the same way yashika that she was a rajasthani dalit writer but now settled in new york but she directly writes in english because uh, she knows english because she is in new york so her novel is coming out as dalit so it's a very um, important novel it talks about uh, you can even refer to this uh, novel for your research or if you are taking up dalit feminism or anything related to dalit and you have another person i wanted to mention baby halda so she has a she is a domestic servant you can see that uh, lady here baby halda she is a domestic servant she was working she she didn't have any formal education she was working in different people's home and she was exploited to the core and father or parents so they were, they never took care of her and while she was working in the home of uh, hindi writer premchand's grandson's home she came across tasnima narsimh's writing and she was uh, he has a big uh, uh, book uh, bookshelf and she was uh, culling out the books and she while cleaning it and she came across those books and she was inspired see where knowledge is where the writers are so and she was actually she wanted to tell her story outside do you remember uh, african american literature in african american literature zora neale hurston they have never got any education formal education is african americans so they learned education they learned english language everything through the masters of hers they were servants so from them they learned so she also uh, wrote her life in the name of i don't understand i can't pronounce this allo andheri andheri i don't know a life less ordinary it was translated into english in 2006 and it was translated into many indian languages but sadly we don't know anything about her okay next a very pro- popular writer urmila pawar marathi and she is a dalit feminist and she has her novels have been translated into english okay other miscellaneous writings in translation nalukattu uh, it's a novel by mt vasudevan nayar from kerala he is known for his uh, uh, using this post structuralism different types of narratives all those things one more uh, novel this is um, second term uh, originally randam bolam translated into english as second term in tamil irandam idam it uh, uh, retells the story of mahabharata from the point of view of bhima so bhima tells the whole story of mahabharata there you find a kind of deconstruction so mt was there and i was absolutely a screenplay writer also he was awarded for his screenplay uh, in some malayalam movies so he is mt very commonly known as mt he is known for his great writings and you have other dalit story this is for men previously i was talking about women dalit women so you have dalit men you you, you have lot but uh, across india um, we know only the dalit uh, writers of our region so it is our duty to promote such writings what are the sufferings what kind of things are going on in their life that we have to promote through translation you can find gujarati dalit writings and you can find sharan kumar limbale out this writing uh, sharan kumar limbale marathi and uh, this is actually a tamil writing ghost of meenam bakkam this is by ashoka mitran a very popular writer of tamil he is not a dalit but 
these writings also can be taken for research they are in translation and one part woman is the latest uh, now sahitya academy winning novel by perumal murugan tamil so it talks about the social levels and another point is unix it talks about the celebration of unix so in tamil nadu we have in pondicherry kuvagam so celebration so only men for unix during that time you find that uh, the diseases are so, uh, just spreading like anything so now it's all cancelled even here in pondicherry we have a temple exclusively for this unix so they come every time there is a celebration they come here they occupy a dance and they think their husband is uh, murdered and they become widows and they all um, so sing songs of like uh, desolation all those things are going on so we can even uh, talk about it so we can see directly so those things are there in the novel so we can take and we can compare it with any other sufferings of uh, Uh, the uh, other states so these are uh, some miscellaneous ideas so i have kept the dots here okay the dots here are the uh, media studies i mean research if you really want to do research we can make use of translation studies as a field as a process and the products and you have media studies you can make use of translated text for media studies and social hist historical cultural religious any other approaches or uh, you can apply on the translated text and you can come out with various ideas okay and uh, to sum up not only like uh, for uh, doing the research in even in our day to day classroom we are making use of grammar translation method not always but sometimes we have to do so even in elt we come upon such a thing like grammar translation method it was originally for latin grammar to be translated but still it is uh, being it is used in many of the classrooms where you find the students to be uh, more of uh, uh, their uh, mother tongue they use mother tongue they are from mother tongue medium of education they find it uh, difficult so as the teachers of english as the students of english research scholars of english we are bilinguals we have that gift if you take any science uh, person or maths person they may not be bilinguals they may not even know they would have even study their uh, subject in their mother tongue that's different but when it comes to the teachers of english language we are surely bilinguals because our english is not our mother tongue so our mother tongue is there then english is there with this kind of thing we have minimum two languages some of you even may be knowing more languages so with this gift you can do such things the platform is translation so it is our responsibility to promote the regional literature into english and i tell you one thing if we are doing such things nobody will find fault with plagiarism because you won't have secondary sources more secondary sources so that will be a great uh, gift to us okay this cut copy paste won't work it will be surely your original work and you will be unique in your field okay uh, my suggestion here maybe some of you won't agree with my views okay it's my suggestion that we have to be different okay every one of us a teacher of english can be different so you can even see in the poem two roads diverge in a wood and i i took the one less traveled by and that has made all the difference if you really want to be a different person if you really want to be a unique person and if you want to enjoy your work we can go for translation translated text and another thing is we are doing a service to your state your region it's a kind of promo promotion who will take these people to global scenario okay when i compared bama with uh, tony morrison the person who evaluated the thesis could understand that bama was also uh, as much uh, suffering as tony morrison not to that extent but there is suffering so this kind of suffering should be expressed through literature it's already expressed in our regional writings but as the teachers of english we should take some initiative to do such uh, promote such translations and research on such translated text okay i think i have come to the end of uh, my presentation 
it's a time for uh, discussion and uh, thank you for uh, patient listening yeah thank you ma'am any questions from the participants you can give it in the chat box we will take one or two questions since we are running out of time i'm actually they are congratulating your uh, presentation through the chat box ma'am thank you so much i i to enjoy the presentation yeah ma'am uh, ma'am i hope there are uh, no questions uh, popping up since you made everything clear about translation okay so you can uh, do one thing you can uh, you can send the powerpoint presentations to the people who are participating yes so ma'am sure ma links and uh, some uh, references so they can make use okay, of references and they can go through and uh, as i told you already this is actually a kind of like uh, samples i have given so i yes, don't know about what's there sure, in you know, gujarati or somewhere else and many north indian professors are here so they can also come forward with uh, this kind of promotions so it's uh, it's going to be a great ma'am i have a question uh, how we can excuse me ma'am yes please uh, we have a question like how we can just a minute ma'am ma'am uh, impression uh, i would like to ask your impression on the role of panchatantra and hitopsada in the world of translation uh, by yes. shri prasad pillai ma'am yes of course and he yes ma'am yes please 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 complete yes my dear uh, yes ma'am uh, how far it is possible to translate archetypes and myths from source to target by priyanka ma'am how far it how is, far it is possible to translate archetypes and myth from source to target language and i hope you have muted your audio ma'am you can unmute yourself ma'am hello ma'am yeah participants uh, thank you for your overwhelming response now i just uh, move on to give a note of thanks to the resource person today wow darni ma'am uh, we were all just felt bound throughout the session as i underlined in my welcome speech today we all felt that uh, we are sitting inside a literature classroom after a long time enjoying and taking notes as well you have justified the title translation and research connecting dots to the utmost satisfaction of everyone ma'am you made the class so lively even anyone who is new to translation studies would understand the nuances of translation through your research and also we were all opened up to all the avenues that are in the translation arena and so many practical suggestions to the researchers and ample examples to understand it was a mind blowing session thank you so much darni ma'am actually participants i was just reminded of a line of kavinyar vairamuthu thedal enbadu ulla varai vaalvil rusi irukum i would like to translate this as exploration is the essential essence of life and i would like to pin this line to dr darani ma'am because i always admire her passion to learn and explore new things in life and even traveling too actually my journey to conduct this international web workshop started with darani ma'am i would say and the immediate positive response that she gave me made magic to work inside me and made it possible for me to meet all of you through this platform so i must thank darni ma'am for her inspiring words Dr. and Mike, all the fans i'm sorry yes ma'am 
I'm inside. No problem, I'm going to answer the questions. So. Okay, we carry on, please. Yeah, uh, so I would like to thank Darni ma'am in all aspects of making this platform uh, a grand success. Thank you ma'am. And all of your uh, presentation, the details you gave us will guide us throughout the translation research. As okay. ma'am has given the information to just Any share the PPT, we will make it possible that also. So we will contact ma'am ma in a near future, even if we have any clarifications to clarify with her. Thank you, ma'am. And thank you all the participants uh, who were very patient till now and made this program, second day program of the International Web, Web Workshop, a grand success. Thank you, one and all. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you, Pa. Any questions to be answered? If you want, suddenly there was a problem with the power. Yeah, ma'am. Uh, no, it's not a problem, ma'am. Uh, okay. they, they just asked uh, how to uh, translate archetypes and myths into the source language, ma'am. Well, that is actually like archetypes and myths can't be uh, given separately. It will be in a novel or something like that. So archetypal uh, novels can be, that's what you find in even uh, the land literature. So when you say land, uh, you have archetypes for each land. So that is in the form of poems. So when you are translating the poems, you have you can translate the archetypes. For example, if you find an arch archetypal woman, she, her description will be there. That can be translated. And while translating, there might be some problems of uh, cultural uh, ideas. So for example, very common example is uh, your wedding. When you say wedding in English, uh, you understand. But in uh, Tamil, we say Tali Katade. So you have Mangal Shutra. For English people, for Europeans, it is not uh, uh, Mangal Shutra. It is rain. So that kind of thing, you have to go for some uh, compromises. You have to make some compromises. Like either you go for uh, end note or footnote. You can give footnotes. Okay. And even the very common thing that we have, that uh, fermentation of curd from milk to curd. They say it is not, uh, when they say curd, they, it is a different taste in European countries. Our curd is different. So even those kind of cultural problems will occur when you try to uh, translate archetypes. So you have to find out a way that you, you can uh, see, I think in Chanti Chitra ma'am's uh, title is that, come cultural problems. So she might be like uh, explaining all these points because I don't want to go deep into that uh, idea because she has to discuss that. So my yes, idea is to help our research scholars to find avenues for their research, future research. So if any questions are there, they can uh, ask me. You can give them my mail ID. Our mail yes, ID is there. So they can yes, contact me uh, using that mail ID. They can call sure. me. And uh, it's my pleasure being with you all. And I thank Dr. Maithili, ma'am, for having given me this opportunity. And it was uh, really uh, kind of like great outlet for me. For so many days, we never taught our students. We were uh, sitting in front of our system. And though I can't see the faces, I'm so happy to see all the participants who are listening to my talk patiently. Thank you, everyone, for your patient listening. Maybe some of the ideas won't be uh, good with you or good for you, but you can just uh, modify it according to your uh, um, uh, needs. So I wish you all the best, research scholars and the teachers. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, madam. Sorry for the disturbance. Okay, bye. No problem, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. It always happens with the technology. Yes. Uh, we are very pleased to have you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Thank you so and, much. Uh, ma yes, ma'am. Happy lunch. Yes, ma'am. Uh, participants, uh, you will have your uh, further information through your WhatsApp group. Thank you for your being here. Thank you all. So we can sign out from the Google Meet platform. Thank you.